Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I have three Valentine's DIYs for you so we're going to get all loved up. They are really cute projects and today I'm also collaborating with Tony from DIY I. I have collaborated with her a few times now so if you haven't subscribed to her make sure that you do because if you're having a bad day just head over to her channel and she'll make you feel so much better. She's just so positive and bubbly and I just find her so funny and she's super talented as well. So for the first DIY I decided I'm going to be making a floating teacup and I'm going to make this again like I said super cute and all lovey dovey. This is what Leo does whenever I start crafting. <laughs> Hello baby. <laughs> He's saying hi to everyone. Look at him acting all cute. He loves the camera by the way. <laughs> His sister doesn't. So this is where I craft and he just watches me the whole time. So I've got Poundland's um, teacup and saucer set. You're also going to need a fork and we're going to use some stones just to make sure it's nice and stable. Try to get a fork that you can bend <laughs> otherwise you're going to need to use some pliers. So I'm going to just have a play around with this so you want to see the position, how high you want your teacup. So I'm happy with where my fork is. I'm going to grip, get my hot glue, just add a little bit to the saucer. Well, not a little bit, you need you need quite a lot. So then you're gonna take your cup and I'm having my handle come sideways. You can have it like this if you like. We're gonna place the hot glue right here to stick the top of the fork. So you're gonna have a structure looking like this. And now I think I'm probably gonna add some hot glue here to add a stone on top just to add a bit of weight. As I'm doing that, I'm gonna take some more hot glue right here. And then you're gonna add some weight to this. Otherwise the whole thing will just tip over. Unless you're using a small teacup, because if you're using a small one, it will be fine because the weight will be distributed better. So I have covered the stones and I'm covering the saucer with some moss. I actually grabbed this from Poundland as well. They have it out around Easter so you have to grab a ton because unfortunately they don't have it year round which I think they should. I always need moss. So I'm just applying hot glue and adding it just to cover the saucer. If you can't grab the moss, you can get moss from your garden, from the park, and it's actually better using natural moss. I do find this moss to be a little bit too green for me. They're also selling these in the Poundland Valentine's range, and I'm going to stick one right here. We're going to cover the fork again with moss. What's important is that you turn it around and do the back as well. I'm going to stick some of these in. I can't remember where I got these, but it's actually part of a bigger artificial plant. I just took them off. So you've got like, you can see this is where the head is and I just plucked them out. I'm going to have mine this way around because I feel like you can see the whole floating structure more rather than straight. So I'm going to start sticking everything kind of sideways. I know it looks very green right now, but don't worry. We are going to change that up in a little bit. I'm sliding some artificial ivy through the handle and then I'm taking it right over the cup. I'm going to cut it and stick it down. I'm going to add some toadstools because that always just brightens everything up. So I've got a pink one, a red one. I think I'm going to probably stick them down like this. And I've taken the wire out. They usually have wire. So I'm going to be using one of these from my paper stack things, die cuts, don't know what that is when I've really used it for that, but I was going to add it into one of these photo things, I've never used them before by the way, so, but it didn't look right, so I think I'm going to add it here, I don't know, it looks so much nicer here, so I'm going to stick that down with some hot glue. Now I've got some paper flowers. They just worked out cheaper. <laughs> so you can use the foam ones if you like. I'm going to take them off the wires and I'm going to just stick them on here. So like I said, just to break up some of this greenery. Let's add one onto the handle. I think that looks cute. So I'm going to use a combination of pink and red. 
So I'm going to have some inside the cup, some coming down, and then I don't know about here, we'll see. Don't you just want to live here? I don't know, it looks so nice. I'm going to see, I'm going to play around and see if I want to stick these anywhere, the table bead scatters that they have. I'm going to get one right here, taking my hot glue again. I like that they are like see-through, translucent. I don't know why, it kind of looks so soothing. I'm going to add one right to the top here. It might be a little tricky because there's not much to stick it down with. We'll see, hopefully it works. Yay! I feel like this is where Care Bears would live. <laughs> I've got these two figurines and they're so adorable. I've never got to use them and I thought, seeing as this is pretty cute, I'm going to have them go on top of the hill and just kiss like this. <laughs> Gonna stick one heart right next to them as well. If this doesn't scream love, I don't know what will. I have a feeling that this might be everyone's favourite project for today. You'll have to let me know once you see the other two. But I just think this is so adorable and cute. I really love the pops of colour with the reds and the pinks as well. Floating teacups are always just really awesome to make. Once you've learned how to make the structure, you can just apply it to any kind of style or project. For the second DIY, really nice and easy, you're going to grab one of those miniature easels and a Valentine's card. So you can leave yours just the colour it is, but I'm going to take some white acrylic paint and I'm just doing my wet wipe pack here. So this is a baby wipe and I'm adding the paint with the wipe and that way you do have it kind of coloured but the wood still comes through and it just dries a lot quicker as well. It's like a stain. So I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and I'm going to take the card apart. Thankfully this will just come off very easily because it's like a 3D pop-up bit. Just sticking that on the easel. I'm so happy with how this one came out. I really love everything in the miniature scale and I'm going to leave this in my room all year long. For the third and final DIY of today, I'm going to show you how to make a gnome and this is honestly the most easiest way I've thought of how to make a gnome ever. And all you're going to need for the main structure of the body is two disposable cups. Grab these two cups, you're going to stick them together about there I would say. Then you're going to grab a sock. This one I've cut up already because I used it for another gnome last year. You're going to take one of these poly balls, this is optional, you're going to place it right here at the end, just makes it look cuter, so it looks more like a hat. And then take your sock with the ball in, place it over the cups, I'm going to have it on the side like that. And then you're going to take your hot glue, we're going to stick the suck on to the cup. So let me just start at the back. Because this is cut, I'm just going to try and tidy that up a little bit. Rolling it over like that. And then I'm just going to carry on sticking it down at the back. You can take anything to make your nose. I'm using a wooden bead but you can use a pom-pom, a ping-pong ball, whatever you have lying around. And when you put the nose on, everything just comes to life, like it actually looks more like a gnome. So I'm going to cover the nose just with a suck on the sides here, bringing it down on the other side as well. You're going to grab a piece of ribbon and you can use anything, this probably was on some pyjamas or something. I'm going to just have a look at how much I need. So wrap it around this area here. And this is too big so I'm going to glue it in half, just fold it over. Then you're going to take your ribbon and place it right there. Then you can cut off the excess as well. You don't have to do this, but I'm actually going to glue mine down to the side. And then I'm going to add this ribbon 
right there. I don't know why I always call them ribbons and I know they're bows. I'm taking one of their wooden confetti. This was in the wedding section. I'm just gonna stick that on right here. And then the final thing that finishes a gnome is a beard. So I would have gone with like a wine red or a pink maybe, but this is all I have. So I'm just gonna have to use this. Let's have a look. I'm gonna take my hot glue and attach it right under the nose. That's really important. Didn't I tell you it would come to life? It's always funny because when you're making an arm it looks like what the heck at the beginning. I'm going to add this heart and finish off like that. I have to say, even though I'm not a known person, I'm definitely warming up to them, or at least the ones that I make, because I really like this one, and I made a Halloween one, which I really loved as well. So that's all of my projects today. I really hope that you have enjoyed. If you have, make sure you stick around and click that subscribe button, and I'd absolutely love if you can share this video with others. It really does help me out. Don't forget to check out Tony, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye for now.